So good morning, everybody. I, I think I am audible to all of you. There was some technical problem in the beginning. I'm very sorry for that. Uh, myself, Dr. C.K. Ashogan. Uh, I'm a periodontist and implantologist, and I have been uh, using uh, dental lasers also for the last more than a decade. And I'm also an associate fellow of World Clinical Laser Institute. And uh, my topic for presentation today is uh, laser perio in the COVID-19 angle. At the very outset, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Dental Reach and Group Pharmaceuticals, especially uh, Mr. Ravinath, Mr. Ashokan, and the technical expert, Dr. Robson, for uh, giving me this podium to share my uh, little knowledge about uh, dental laces to my colleagues. And uh, friends, uh, lo life under lockdown has been uh, so distressing for all of us, the COVID-19 pandemic has crippled the entire world. More than a fast spreading deadly infection, it has become a total disruptor of the social life of mankind. But I would like to take a look at it in a different angle. <clears throat> in every challenges, we can find opportunities also. The best example is this webinar itself. It took, it took The webinars are the best and the most economical way of sharing knowledge. Coming to dentistry, it is going to be written in the history as dentistry before COVID and dentistry after COVID. Now the lockdown has been shifted from many places and we are going to resume our practice. Practice, But I'm sure we definitely not the way we have been practicing before. But at least for the coming three, three or four months, as for the instruction from the authorities, government authorities, we are not supposed to carry out any uh, uh, Elective procedures, we are supposed to do only emergency or essential dental procedures that are too strictly adhering to the COVID infection control guidelines. As far as possible, we should try to limit the generation of aerosol to the minimum. The idea is we should, we should not become an epicenter of COVID-19. And in this, in this circumstances, use of dental laces would be an excellent idea to minimize the aerosols and viral load in the dental operatory. And now, before going further to, into my presentation, uh, I would like to get an opinion. I would like to get an opinion calling from these participants. Uh, how many of you are using lasers in your private practice, in your dental practice? And my second question would, would be, uh, how many of you have taken a valid course on dental lasers before, before starting your practice, dental, using uh, lasers in your practice? You can take uh, some 30 minutes, 30 seconds for that. You can put it in a chat box and I just want to know what kind of audience I am you know, I'm talking to. I think you are, uh, you, can, you can enter your, your yes or no in the, you can, your answer in the chat box. Now, friends, uh, sorry for the little uh, tech, the interruption in between. See, uh, you need not be an Albert Einstein to use dental lasers in your private practice, in your dental practice. You know, but what you should know, some something about the lasers, what exactly is a laser and how it is produced. You have a laser machine in your, in your clinic and uh, you should know what exactly is there inside, how the laser energy is produced. But how does it interact on the tissue? How what happens to the laser beam when it interacts? You know, it falls upon a you know uh, uh, or a tissue, and these things. And you should know how to set power. Power setting is very very important when you use a laser machine, and these things are very very important. And that you need not go for an PhD for that. But if only if you take a two day or three days course, which is going on, you know, uh, a lot of courses are going on. If you want, I can tell you. Finally, at last, I can tell you where to good courses you can attend. And uh, that is how it could be. So you should have the minimum knowledge of it, about lasers. And what is laser? Laser is nothing but light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So if you elaborate, if you analyze a little bit, each, each, each word itself, you can understand what exactly is a laser. 
first is light. This light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So what is light? Light, we all know, it's a form of energy that exists as particles and travels in the form of waves at a constant velocity. And the basic unit of this radiated energy is photon. And when you talk about the uh, light, the two, two terminologies are very, very important. These two qualities of light you should understand. What is an amplitude and what is a wavelength? Amplitude is the other is the laser or light travels in waves, I told you. And every wave has got two components. One is the vertical component and the other one is the horizontal component. The amplitude is the vertical component, the wave is the horizontal component. Amplitude, amplitude shows cannot the intensity of light, intensity of energy in light. And the wavelength, you should one should understand the wavelength also because it is the as per the wavelength, the tissue penetration also will be different as per the wavelength. And the wave by which, which the laser beam has been transported or carried to the target tissue also differs. All these things you understand only if you know the wavelength. The wavelength is very, very important. And the wavelength changes as per the activity which is there in the laser machine, which I'll tell you later. And, and light. One is light, the other one is amplification by stimulated emission. This amplification and stimulation of the amplified light, the simply the light that happens, this, this is a process which is happening exclusively in the, in the laser machine itself. So we should know what exactly is a laser machine. So inside the laser machine, the very important component is nothing but it's a very simple machine. It has got a, what is what it called as it's a called an optical cavity or optical chamber that is placed exactly inside. The majority, the maximum portion of the laser machine inside is occupied by this optical chamber, optical cavity. And this optical cavity contains the very, very important uh, you know, uh, substance that is called the active media. And it's up, uh, when this active media gets excited from the light coming above, you can see there is a pumping mechanism there. You can see pumping mechanism, electricity, when, the, when your machine is switched on, electricity passes in and it flashes the light and the light falls on the active media. And it is this active, this active media get excited. And in the process of the excitation, it, is, it gets stimulated. That stimulated energy will come out and that is called photon. That energy is called photon. And this photon will travel in a peculiar path in this uh, uh, it, in this uh, machine, in this activity chamber, and come out as a single small polymeric beam, and it passes through many uh, lenses, and you can see some cooling mechanisms also here. And, the, and one thing I, put, I, I want to tell you in the active media, what excites is, during this excitation process, it it speed up the what speed up the you know movement or the movement of these electrons or the energy particles is. Uh, the refract, there are two mirrors kept on either side. One is the partially reflective mirror, and the other one is the fully reflective mirror. This is called the optical resonator. This, uh, this photons, you know, this is because of the difference in this refractive, uh, reflective uh, capacity. The photons travel in random and collide each other, and it is resulting in the uh, release of photon energy. And that is coming out as laser. So I told you it's a it's a it's a it's a laser machine is nothing but it's inside that is an optical chamber an optical cavity it contains uh, active media and then the active media is triggered or uh, you know energized by the flash lamp flash lamp or when the well light falls in it gets energized and energy is produced that is called photons and these photons pass out as a very you know collimated energy it's a very highly collimated or highly focused energy. And I mean, the, the, so I told you what is laser, that is laser, la light, ampli light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So next is the radiation. We, we saw how it is getting stimulated inside the optical chamber. And this, next is the radiation. This, this radiation coming, the, 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 the light which comes out of the laser machine is called the radiation. That is the laser. And the laser is also another form of light. We should understand that. And this, the, the quality and this, uh, you know, uh, the basic study of this radiation was initially carried out by nothing, none other than Albert Einstein, way back in uh, 1970. 
And he understood that when an electron moves from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, a photon or the particle of light, see he referred to as a photon, is emitted and the light emitted in this way from a, through the moment of charged particle is called radiation. And one should understand that to the, how this uh, laser light is different from the uh, normal light. There are three important characteristics we have to understand. One is, this is, uh, first one is it is coherent. Coherent means all this light waves travels, you know, laser waves travels. It's very compact and tightly compact and it travels in one plane. That's called, it's, it's called synchronized. It's travel, it's coherent. It is coherent in nature. And uh, it can be collimated. This light can be collimated. If you, if this light can be collimated if you use some lens or some media, you can collimate it at a point. You can, you can, you know, you can use it for. That's how it is. That's why which of this property, the collimation, we could use it for uh, uh, cutting the tissue. So that is very, very important as far as laser dentistry is concerned. And it is monochromatic. Many a time, it's a single color, but many a time we can't see many of the uh, lasers. It doesn't show any. It doesn't have any color. What you are seeing when you use the, the laser, the light ray coming out is not the color of the, the razor. That is the that's the aim. That's the color of the aiming light or the aiming beam. It's otherwise called pilot beam. So these are the three qualities of this. Is this these three qualities makes the laser light different from the normal light? So it can be coherent in nature. It is collimated. It can be pointed to a particular point, and it is monochromatic in nature. Now coming to the the already uh, formed, already generated energy, the photon, the laser has to be carried to the target tissue. Yeah. Suppose we are using it in the oral cavity, oral tissues. So how how it is being carried to the oral tissue? So there are many many routes, many 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 mechanisms. But the simplest mechanism, which is usually used in the case of tired lasers and NDI lasers, a flexible fiber optic system. It's a fiber, fiber optic, fiber optic uh, fiber, you know, cable which carries this energy to the target site. And in the, you know, higher, major, higher wavelength machines like carbon dioxide and Erbium, 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 yeah, yeah, just a hard tissue laser, and there's a, it has got the rigid glass fiber or semi-flexible hollow wave guides, which can, or you know, carbon dioxide is a little more cumbersome, it has got uh, articulated arms. So these are the methods by which this uh, generated, uh, uh, you know, uh, the laser is being carried to the target tissue. So if it's simply for, you know, just to just to frighten you, don't get scared of by seeing this, uh, you know, the inner aspect of the laser machine is accidentally, I took this photo when the technician came and opened up because it was having some problems some time back. And as out of interest, I took this photo and kept it here. And you are not supposed to, you should never ever open up a, a laser machine because it is very, very dangerous. And it's a very, you know, a lot of electricity is being generated there. It's very chance for getting shock. So it is very lethal also. So never ever open a uh, laser machine. But just to show you, I took this photograph. So in a in nutshell, in a uh, in a laser machine, these are the things which is there. The first is the a light source, the pumping source, and the optical cavity, the active media, reflective mirrors on both sides, partially and fully reflective mirrors. And after that, when the the, the, the safety switches and power controls at the foot pedal you have, and there is a fiber optic bundle which carries the laser from the origin of the laser, that is from the machine to the uh, target tissue. And of course, uh, if there's a hand base at the end, and, and again, Better. And you, you just have a look at this, uh, take a look at this uh, electromagnetic spectrum. So laser energy is a light energy, it's a it's electromagnetic energy. It travels in the form of waves. It differs from the normal light in three ways. The very basic uh, different characteristics is so it makes unique in three characteristics. One is can be collimated, it is uh, it's, it's, it travels in one plane and it can be you know coherent and it is monochromatic. These are the three qualities. So up to this point, I think it is understood. And coming to the electromagnetic spectrum, please take a look here. On my right hand side, you can see this, these are all cosmic rays and ultraviolet rays. These are all uh, these are all ionizing radiation. It's not good for our body, not good for our living cells. It is mutagenic. That's why. So this is uh, this is just for information. This uh, 400 below. 
wavelength it is cosmic rays and ultraviolet and what you see here is the visible portion of the light and this is this is only very few lasers comes under this visible light that uh, one thing is uh, one laser is a uh, uh, KTP laser potassium uh, nitro phosphate that is not very much in use but uh, that is the only laser which is available and also some red laser colored laser also is there that is usually used for you know uh, elip you know removal of caries and all those things uh, otherwise all the lasers the diode lasers and NBR lasers uh, VMR lasers carbon dioxide lasers all these lasers comes under either in the infrared portion, either near infrared, in the infrared, or far in the infrared portion. So it all comes in the infrared. What do you mean by it comes in the, in the infrared portion? Because infrared means tem temperature, right? thermal. Because all these lasers produce the effect, works on the principle of thermal energy. Because the light energy will be converted into thermal energy. And this thermal energy is the energy which brings in changes in the target tissue. So, so, so I think so, so far you understood uh, I think it is very easy to understand this. That is the ionizing radiation, and the visible portion, and the infrared portion. Most of the uh, laser uh, wavelength comes in the infrared region. Now we should know before going to practice, you know, before buying a machine, or even after buying a machine, you should understand. Before using, you should understand what exactly happens when a laser is being pumped onto it uh, or a tissue. What happens to the laser itself? laser ray itself and what happens to the tissue that is called a laser tissue interaction so coming to the what happens to at the what happens to the laser rays itself there are four possibilities it can either get reflected reflection at reflected means without producing any visible biological effect it gets reflected from the surface suppose a diode laser falls on the enamel surface it gets reflected but, but uh, suppose it gets, uh, you know, falls on a metallic surface, it gets reflected. But here the problem is, you know, sometimes in the reflected light, we'll be having much more energy and this uh, inadvertently it might go to a substance or area where it is not uh, really required to hit. So maybe your eyes. So that could be the problem. And suppose you're using a diode laser and there is a metallic respiration in the neighborhood and inadvertently or suppose by mistake you show the light to the metallic portion there is chance that this energy can be bounced back with intense force and hit your eyes so invariably every whenever you use a laser you are supposed to use you should it's mandatory on your side or on your part to use a wavelength specific google it will come later so one possibility is it can get reflected and the other one is it can get scattered <clears throat> the, the, here also it is not the desired quality of the, uh, the change which we want to see. The, it can get scattered because it's not producing any biological effect. It just gets get scattered. And what about the and next is the transmission. See, it's, it can get transmitted also without getting absorbed or any producing any visible change. The best example is <coughs> cold lasers. Because cold lasers, ophthalmology, ophthalmologists use a lot of use lasers for retinal surgery it's called cold lasers it's cold lasers never could be doesn't increase the temperature but the property of the cold laser is when it passed it can pass through it can transmit through transmit through all the anterior chamber all the parts of the eye except the retina so the retinal surgeon can do the surgery uh, without uh, you know affecting the other part and other parts of the eye so that is this is these are some that is, those lasers it's called it is transmissible lasers but the, the quality which we look for in dental lasers is it, to be used in oral health is absorption. Suppose we want to cut the tissues, we want to coagulate the tissues, we want to carry out a lot of other procedures like that. So the absorptive power is more important as far as we are concerned. And then that is what uh, we, that is how the, all the diode lasers and NDR lasers and uh, all, you know, it works out. That is, the, that is what happens in it when you use the oral lasers can be used. So this reflection, scattering, transmission, if you don't want that, it's the absorptive problem. And the, what happens to the tissue when a laser is being beaming, beam is being applied? What will happen to the uh, tissue? I told you the laser works up because all, all these lasers which comes in the infrared region is thermal effect. The, the light energy will be converted into thermal energy. This is thermal energy which brings in changes in the 
visible changes in the target tissues. So this is very, very important because the power setting is very, very important if you really want to make your uh, laser treatment very effective, predictable, and good for the patients. So what happens is, you know, when a very, very low level, low lower laser energy, suppose it is less than uh, one watt or 0.5, there is slight increase in the temperature, that is maybe around 37 degrees centigrade and below 50 degrees centigrade, it just increases the temperature in the tissue. That is very beneficial in beneficial for the regeneration of the tissue. Suppose that this temperature low level laser therapy, laser you show in a healing wound, for example, in a extraction socket or in a non-healing wound, it will it will definitely improve the healing capacity with the regeneration of the because it has got a regenerative, you know, effect on the fibroblast, and it will increase the production of uh, collagen fibers, and in the inflammatory component also it is reduced. So these are the properties you use it in, at this temperature. When the when the temperature goes on, it is more powerful. The temperature rises, and if it is above about 50 degrees centigrade, you can kill all the bacteria. You can eliminate all the bacteria within the gingival sulcus or in the periodontal pocket. So without affecting the other tissues. And that is the beauty of this particular diode laser and the soft tissue model. I tell you 90% of the soft tissue lasers used today in the world market is diode lasers. So with 50 degrees centigrade, you can set all the set the machine in such a way that these are the temperatures, which is effective temperature on the tissue. So when it is 50 degree, all the non-sporulic bacteria will be inactivated. So in coming to the in this COVID season, because all the COVID virus, COVID virus will never go, you know, it is at the, around the temperature 60 degrees, you get eliminated. Or the temperature 60 to 65, no COVID virus can survive in the oracality. So if it goes beyond 60 degrees centigrade, that is the that is the temperature we require for the coagulation. So these are this is another point, you know, another property of plant which we utilize in our number practice, especially in production. And there is bleeding in the, in the, from the gingiva, from the extractor, so forth, or after surgery, you just you can coagulate the area. But for that, it should be the laser should be in a non contact mode, and it's the temperature should be between 70 to 60 degrees centigrade. And another property, a very good property of the temperature increases a little more in the target site. You know what happens is it's a, it's a process called a defect called tissue welding. That is the reason why when you use diode lasers in your practice, you don't have to use any sutures. So your patient in this COVID season need not come again for suture removal. So that is the beauty of this, this laser. And the temperature goes up with it's about if it is at about 100 degrees centigrade, you get the, that is the desired effect if you want that you want to get the tissue. What happens is vaporize the tissue. See, every tissue, whether it is hard or soft tissue, especially in the soft tissue, and especially in the tissue which is inflamed or if there is a lot of granulation, you have a lot of water content. So, this water content, the water will start, start to vaporize. And in, in, the, in the process, then the tissue will get ablated. So, that's the ablation is the uh, thing which happens at the degree of temperature at 100 degrees centigrade. And if it goes beyond 100 degrees centigrade, suppose it reaches somewhere around 200 degrees centigrade. What happens is the carbonization, it's a char. That is not the desired effect that we want in our practice in our, in our tissue. It's what char means that tissue will get destroyed and the, and the temperature, you know, not, not getting focused to the area which we really want, which is spreading or it is hyperthermia, it's collateral depth of the collateral, I have, you know, you know conduction of the temperature to the unguarded area which can heat up the bowl and heat up the tool, tool and the project. So never ever go the temperature, see the temperature, never go beyond the beyond contact centigrade. So we'll come to know what are the power sitting at which we can achieve this uh, temperature and factors which affect the absorption. So what the desired quality of the laser which we look for in a in our dental practice is is absorption quality. So what are the things which affect the absorption of the lasers in the target tissue? The one is the power intensity, power of the setting. Suppose it is a uh, two watt power you have, power setting, the watt system, the watt system, the, the power of the light when it starts from the patient, not when it reaches the, uh, the end of the fiber, the end of the fiber, because there is some energy loss in between when it passes through the fiber. 
So you can maybe you should say it's three, three, three watts, two watts, one watt like that. But it is not a cycling that will never come into three just a bit of the uh, laser fiber fiber thing. So usually suppose there is a two uh, two watts setup, and you said two hundred. There are these uh, cables are available in different sizes, and they usually it is two hundred and four hundred micron, and some of the companies give uh, six hundred microns also. So in two hundred micron, suppose you uh, uh, two watts power setting, you just coming to a uh, four uh, micron fiber. And imagine the same power is coming through two micron. The, um, the power which is coming through laser, which is coming through the two micron power um, uh, fiber, will be having more intense, will be more intense, and it will be more powerful when it reaches that tip. So the the, the the size of the cable also determines, and the power setting also. These two determines uh, determine majority of the time the the effectiveness of the uh, or the absorption of the laser. Into Tissue. Next is the duration of exposure. So how suppose you keep the, your laser tip for such a long time on a particular location, what happens? It's not that desirable, it starts burning. So it also depends on the duration of exposure. You are not supposed to keep your laser tip on a just you know it's only for a short time. You should not be short keep it for a long time. So the duration of exposure is also very important. And the amount of cooling, most of the laser, especially in um, from an external source. But when you use a diode laser, when you use a soft tissue laser, you have to what I use this uh, 5 ml syringe saline. That is the easiest thing. And you are especially in this COVID season, COVID season, you are not supposed to use any previous syringe or any you know anything which you you know generate the aerosol. So that is the best thing. There should be cooling provided from one side. Your sister or husband will be doing that. And the wavelength also counts. The wavelength is direct. The, the degree of penetration to the tissue is directly proportional to the wavelength. So whenever there is a high wavelength, the penetration will be less. So action will be more superficial. <clears throat> and the emission mode also. There are these two modes that we can use. Uh, we can utilize this energy when it comes to the fiber. One is the in a, you know, continuous mode, and the other one is the pulse mode. So that is also very important. Continuous mode means then enter energy is pumped continuously without any interruption. Pulse means mode means there's any one bulk of energy is followed by pulse of energy is followed by a duration of cooling or relaxation. So there will be a cooling for the tissue, but the cutting efficiency will be less, and the tissue characteristics characteristics that is very very important. The same. Power setting. If you use on a fibrous tissue and use on a, you know, you know, a tissue where there are a lot of granulation and inflammation, this will impact. Inflammation, the power setting will be much much lesser. In the it is required. The the required power setting will be much lesser when the tissue is inflamed. So it is very much absorbed in inflamed tissue because it contains a lot of pigments, uh, hemoglobin, melanin, etc. And uh, after I see in 1970, it took nearly 40 years to develop. To get some development in the field of lasers. And it is this gentleman, this is an engineer, Theodore Maiman, is an engineer and physicist in the Hughes Laboratory in the United States. And he, in 2016, built the first uh, working laser, Theodore Maiman. And we all inducted to him for all the further development in the field of lasers. And, and that was the beginning of dental laser investigations in 1960. And after 10 years, you know, first diode laser was demonstrated by Schwartz Alprof New USSR, for which he secured Nobel Prize in the year 2000. And in 1980, Fred Picaro, Pic, Picaro and Pick cited the benefits of soft tissue laser in the periodontal procedures. And in 1989, FDA clearance to the NDR laser. These are some of the milestones before going further. I just would like to give you some input. And 89 uh, FDA got clearance, FDA clearance, NDR laser got FDA clearance from the mayor and mayor company. They were supposed to make this and by the name in the name D Lace 300. Then uh, in 1998, BioLace obtained Bio marketing clearance for the BM gun, that is the first uh, uh, heart tissue laser, even today, that is the best heart tissue laser available in the market. 
both the hard and soft tissue you can use. And it was a revolutionary breakthrough in the laser industry. Now coming to the types of lasers, I told you that it can be a soft tissue laser or it can be a hard tissue laser, depending on the tissue or the, the, the target tissue. The soft tissue, what we look for in the industry, the, the, the maximum use is for the soft tissue laser. The first generation soft tissue laser was carbon dioxide laser, but it was a very complicated, huge articulated machine. It's very, very difficult to carry from one place to another. It's non portable, and it is such a cumbersome machine. It's a lot of it's a big money to buy that. And nowadays, carbon dioxide laser is not much in use. And uh, those who have already bought, they may be using it, but the present generation, 90% of the lasers which are being sold out today is the diode lasers. And the second generation laser is the NDR laser, large size, but for, for service, but it can be service, but the other one was not serviceable. And but even NDR laser has got a uh, you know definite disadvantage comparing to diode laser. What is what is that disadvantage? It penetrates the tissue, tissue penetrates. So it, it can unwanted thermal effect to the collateral thermal effect to the unwanted areas. It can heat up the bone and dindy. So that is why. The present generation oral lasers or dental lasers are mostly diode lasers. Diode is in diode lasers, the, the active medium is a semiconductor diode made of uh, gallium, aluminum, and arsenal. The, the hard tissue laser also is of use in the industry. Suppose one is looking for only for soft tissue procedures like period procedures, after sulfur treatment, lipoma removal, uh, you know, small growth and uh, building, look up back here. And also all perio procedures, you know, it is better. It, it can, you need to have only a soft tissue laser. But if you really want to use <laughs> procedures, both like the periodontal plastic surgery, you want to manipulate the bone with the vasectomy, and uh, you know, planing up of the surface areas, and you know, root planing, or this you have, this you have, okay, uh, hard tissue laser. The one which is available, the best one is available, is the Serbian laser. And, but if you have a soft tissue laser in conjunction with uh, what I use is the piece of piece of surgical machine. That also is the, that is the I think that, that could go better because you know RBM laser is very very costly and it is almost 20, 25, 000, 25 lakhs of this. So the best option is, is to have a soft tissue laser along with the piece of surgery unit. And you know, why laser is important in periodontics? Because it has got definite advantages because it makes the uh, treatment much more easy and predictable. The cell could be much more predictable and comparing to the conventional therapy and it's better infection control. That is the focus. That is not and operatively and the operator. The, the viral load or the bacterial load in the operatively will be much, much less, and also in the oral cavity will be less. When you use a soft tissue laser in the oral cavity, and better acceptance, or you know, just a better acceptance by the patient also, and your profile also increases as a dentist. So, what are the basic things which keeps a, a person away from a away uh, from a dentist? There are fear of three things. One is pain. The other one is switches. The next one is uh, pain and the drill sound and sort of things. Nothing of that sort of is happening in these places because we don't have we don't have pain. We don't have to give anesthesia needle that is and one thing is for that. And the needle you don't many a time with the power setting is such a way that uh, it, it just within the threshold of the that particular person you don't give even a soft soft anesthesia. But uh, many a times when when a fibrotomy or a you know, deep fibers has to be cut, phrenectomy and all those things fibers. You know, you have to, you have to give yes, infiltration in this tissue. Otherwise, it's not needed. And definitely, when you use a laser, it's a high-tech uh, world now. People look for, see, you now it is 50 percent the quality, the experience, and expertise of the doctor. And the, uh, the remaining 50 percent is the gadgets. Is, that is what makes you fetch your patients. So it is a, it's a good idea if you have a laser machine in your clinic, provided you have some, you know, technical knowledge also along with that. And it is an effective tool to build you definitely to build your practice, especially in the post COVID season. Because, you know, I don't think there will be one, you know, one effort to go for that also. There won't be any 
throw patients which you have been getting in the in, in the past because you can't because you have to keep the social distancing you have to uh, you know you are supposed to do only emergency procedures so in this situation having a laser you have to carry out a lot of procedures and with the patient need no come to clinic again also but these are the these are the some of the advantages if you have a laser and <clears throat> and the preferred lasers i told you for periodontal procedures or if you are looking for only for uh, soft tissue procedures a diet laser is enough and and uh, if you go if you if you want to go for an, a comprehensive uh, you know aspects then both the heart, heart tissue and the soft tissue management you should have an rbm pr laser and the diet laser the, the the good quality that the the main advantage of diet laser is you know which is what the low, low level therapy and high level therapy in the low level therapy the low level therapy if you like to do it can increase the regeneration of the tissue so it can apply it has got a lot of other applications also it's called the low level laser therapy which will come later thank you later and why like why diet lasers i told you it's a, it's a, it's a small machine it's a very simple and portable machine and it's not that costly also you can buy a, uh now you can buy a laser machine it's optical laser machine by giving uh, 3 to 4 lakhs of rupees and it is less expensive and it is more safe and target tissues are melanin hemoglobin water and it is can be very extensively used in the type tissue and some other and another thing is it is it is bacteriicide in nature and uh, some of the periodontal pathos or we know or those who are periodontists in this uh, in this part in this in this participants who are participating in this uh, webinar we all know that you know most of the per destructive periodontitis what is most of the putative pathogens are positive agents are like uh, agrivacti bacter and uh, trypanosoma forcibus or the dendigola and bilobacter all these microorganisms are, are uh black pigment pigment and anaerobic rots so this uh, bacteria will be very much sensitized and absorb fast to this organisms and it is totally a bacteriicide effect you get if you use this uh, diet laser in periodontology and laser energy is attracted to melanin hemoglobin in water which are abundantly in plain and this is tissue and it can be safely used on cardiac patients and those with pacemakers an alternative for a set you for a laser laser machine is what is it uh, electrosurgery electrosurgery you know it's a very high power you have instead of uh, here we have to use maximum maybe some three parts or you have to use 300 parts and uh, in that we can you know the thermal effect to the tissue the bone and the, and the heart tissue will be much more but right uh, so you don't have it and suppose a patient comes to you with a valvular disease or has undergone some valvulectomy or so so those patients in order to prevent the infective endocarditis patients we can to lace the sulcus or the periodontal part of lacing it say good good methods by we can eliminate or reduce the chance of uh, subacute bacterial endocarditis and so it can be used around implants and better patient acceptance Allow the removal, removal of the diseased tissue only without touching the normal tissue. You can selectively you can remove the diseased tissue, and uh, and provides of course it provides an optimum environment for the coagulation, for the healing, for the healing, and and prevent bacteremia. And then the one important point which I have uh, is there is prevents bleeding. Also. A bloodless field is a boon to any any dental surgeon. And coming to the COVID scenario, it provides extremely sterile operating field and prevents cross infection. And there is also since plaque contains less amount of bacteria. I am not telling that there is no no uh, virus also at all in the uh, operatory, but it can be there. But the amount is less. But if at all is there, the amount of the number of the viral load and bacterial load in the aerosols will be much much lesser, and it reduces the aerosols by the most. and it makes sense to use soft tissue laser for all the peri op procedures during this covid-19 pandemic now coming specifically to the diode laser part it's an optically formed semiconductor diode made of aluminum gallium and arsenide and, and some of the uh, higher you know thousand yeah, 664 you know more wavelength 
which has got uh, uh, indium also. They add indium, aluminum, gallium, arsenic. So the wavelength is like this. Uh, eight M. The, I have two machines in my clinic. One is the Picasso from AMD laser, and, and the other one is Sirona uh, uh, Extend. These two are excellent machines, and I of late I come across another machine that is fully indigenous. I give a little bit of particulars about that product later on. This, that, is, that's a, that is the only indigenously Indian made laser which is available today. That I, I tell you later. And that also I am using, and that's a beautiful machine. We all can be proud of it. And uh, the active medium in uh, diode laser is a semiconductor like diode. And the infrared, of course, it comes in the infrared, infrared and uh, close to invisible, uh, infrared invisible uh, region of the electromagnetic spectrum. And it gets absorbed in melanin, hemoglobin, and water. And uh, delivery system is optic fiber. Mode of uh, transmission, mode of uh, you know delivery is like, it can be either a continuous wave or a pulse wave. I told you, but but it's a continuous wave and a pulse mode. In continuous mode, the energy is passing uninterrupted. In pulse mode, it's coming coming in pulses and it's followed by a period of relaxation, so it will get cooling to the tissue. The application is soft tissue, period, deep whitening, etc. All the all everywhere. See, friends, uh, you know, before start, before start using the laser, I also have to It is costly thing whether it is worth spending four to five lakhs of a piece. Everything when I is it really worth? Another thing is whether it is safe for us, safe for us, safe for my eyes, safe for my health, safe for my patients. All these doubts will be have you any of us. You, we also will be having this so, but, but once I underwent the course by the World Clinical Laser, laser Institute, and I, I, I learned the real technique of using the laser. And after that, in the lab, yeah, now it's almost 11 years now. Now I can't do any procedures in the oral cavity without having a laser. If the, my laser machine is you know, out of order, I'm also out of order. I have little handicap. So that is the situation. So, so in almost all procedures, you can utilize your machines. It's an excellent adjunct to your practice. I'm not. I'm not saying that it is a. It is a replacement, or it's a, it's a replacement for any procedures. But it is an excellent adjunct or tool to make your practice more more predictable and more effective. And how does diode laser works on two principles? One is in higher energy level. It brings in photothermolysis from the tissue. The higher when the power is power mode is in the power power setting is more the more power at the, at, at the tissue level and it brings in thermolysis or vaporization of the tissue is called photothermolysis. It's, it's because of by virtue of this this uh, quality this mechanism uh, this the you know the coagulation the, the, the tissue ablation of the tissue the cut, tissue cutting happens and it is also can also be used in a low power setting. Initially, it was called a low level laser therapy. Now, that's, that terminology is not there. Now, it is a now it is called photobiomodulation or biomodulation section. And in low, low, low level uh, power setting, it produces photochemical changes. In high level power setting, it produces photothermolysis. And low level uh, uh, power, it, it produces photochemical changes. And in low level laser therapy, what happens is it's called biostimulation or bio photobiomodulation. It's a light mediate enhanced healing. In low level laser therapy, the photons will elicit cellular biologic response in the tissues as a result of photochemical reaction. And it, and it increases the circulation and stimulates the fibroblastic and osteoblastic activity and the, the, thereby collagen synthesis. In biomodulatory effect of laser will reduce pain, inflammation, and reduce prostaglandin P2. And what happens is, you know, when the laser beam, the laser energy falls on a Tissue or a cell at the cellular level, the receptors in the mitochondria get activated and it will start producing more and more ATP, adenosine triphosphate, that is the energy molecule within the cell. And this energy is really required for the northern tissue undergoing regeneration. So, this photon energy will stimulate the mitochondria, increased ATP production, increased ATP production, and it is enhanced regeneration of the tissues. So that is what is happening in low power setting. So it can be not only for cutting the tissues and coagulation of the tissues, it can also be used for, for biomodulation or bio or bio photobiomodulation. 
And another thing is, uh, you know, uh, there is something called photodynamic therapy also, the same thing, lower level power setting. When the, if the tissue is initially applied or caught up with some dye, what happens is the photos is called photosensitizer dyes. These molecules get adapted to the bacterial membrane and these bacteria will become more and more, uh, you know, sensitive to the laser, you know, the photons. And the laser will activate the dye molecule. Activate this, uh, uh, activate this dye molecules in this process the uh, laser when the laser acts upon this dye molecules there is release release of something called signet toxin uh, 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 signet toxin radicals this is very very detrimental to the bacteria cell so the reaction with this oxygen leads to the reduction of signet singlet 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 oxygen radicals and this uh, aggressive singlet toxin oxidates the membrane of the bacteria and that is what the what lies in, in the uh, in laser bacterial detection and biomodulatory technique, etc. That's the non uh, surgical product therapy. And uh, in the dive laser from the machine, we have to get the energy. There's a target set, so it is being carried through the cables, fiber optics, and there will be a, the cable will be either 200 or 400 micron in size. 400 micron size always for the soft tissue, gross soft tissue cutting, and the two, and all the even for the periodontal uh, you know, pocket therapy and everything, you can use that. But 200 uh, micron is usually used for the endodontic purpose. So uh, there are two types of fibers. One, the fiber can either be a strippable fiber, which is available in big coils, and you can strip off a little, little bit from the top, and you can lace it, use it for lacing. And through the hand, come through the hand piece and set for lacing. And it can be also uh, disposable tips, also, is there. And this is the machine which I use, uh, I started using uh, lace, lace, laser practice uh, way back in 99 with this particular, uh, 2009 with this particular machine. Even now, I am using it by MD laser. This is the Serona extent. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, what I told you an indigenous machine which is being manufactured in Bangalore and some of the ISR engineers in after retirement they are making this product actually they have uh, introduction to the industries much later for the last three or four years but initially they have been manufacturing lasers for the ophthalmological use and I was in, in place for the last more than 10 15 years so it's a good choice if somebody is looking for buying an indigenous uh, laser. It's uh, cheaper also. They come out with uh, some pocket laser also, which can be very port portable and carry it in, in your pocket. pants pocket. You can keep it in, you can take it to those who are in freelance practice. You can, you can think about that. And this is a mini laser, which is the power set. This is the one, it's a less smart machine. It's only four watt. The other one is a 10 watts machine. Just to want to show you, then this is one, you know, one, machine which I want to procure in my practice sooner or later, sooner only. So this is the, this is one of the, one of the, one of the beautiful uh, work in hard cutting, hard tissue laser in the market today. And that is in RBMJR 2940 uh, millimeter, nanometer wavelength. It's an all tissue laser. It can be used for both for hard and soft tissue. And uh, it's a fiber print technology. Most of it doesn't have So the energy loss also, also will be minimized. And it's a minimally invasive uh, you know, machine and uh, can be used all the, for all the periodontic procedures. And diet soft tissue, and now we will come to some of the clinical situations where you can use the uh, diet machines, which I have been using for the last 11 years. And, uh, and but, but before going for in this present scenario, before going to practice, uh, the lockdown is uh, many of the places is over, but it is extended lockdown, and I think there are still there are a lot of hotspots now. And uh, we have to wait at least for three, four months to get into a regular practice. But as per the government rule, we can start your clinic and practice, do some uh, emergency procedures or the elective procedures. Can be, uh, when seeing a patient, you have to go ahead. You have to you have to strictly adhere to the protocols which have been fixed by the government. There is a strict ordinance on the part of the government that you should limit your practice to only emergency procedures. 
And if at all, and if we are doing these procedures, we should always settle to the and that is a real lifesaver, a lifesaver, and we should I don't cannot compromise on that. This patient's nieces, about this patient calves out. There is propelling and a lot of uh, viral particles will be pumped out. So, one thing I want to tell you every patient, whoever it is, whether even if it's not a patient, the patient, the bystander itself, and you are not supposed to get a bystander inside if this is the child, child patient, and whoever it is, everyone who comes in that dental clinic area should be considered as a potential COVID patient. So you should be always with all this armamentarium. And another thing is you should have a, uh, uh, you know, surgical mask always, not that uh, examination cloth, sorry, sorry, examination cloth, not an examination cloth, the surgical gloves you should have. So N95 mask, surgical gloves, and goggles are the most important thing. And of course, uh, as per the protocol, you should have a full body cover uh, gown also. And these are the things, mandatory things which you had to and now there is an acute shortage of uh, i'm getting a little deviated from that don't think that i'm going i'm going in the different track i'll come back soon just giving some input to be put into this because that also is my favorite topic the infection control so see nowadays there is acute shortage of uh, n95 mask in this world because you know so a lot of research has, has happened clinical randomized clinical trials has conducted in many of the universities in the us and europe especially in duke's university and also in stanford university they have conducted some research and results are out this n95 mask can be reused for our three four methods by which you can decontaminate this machine this gloves and reuse it the one method which they suggest is can be if you apply vaporized uh, hydroperoxide vapor for at least for six minutes and then you can use it and another method is you keep your uh, you know uh, the research shows that the covid virus cannot stay on any surface for more than three days so so, so you leave it for the natural uh, sterilization process so, so you keep your uh, your n95 mask in a paper bag and keep it for keep it for four days it will naturally get it sterilized so the fourth day or fifth day you can take out and that's then so they say that there's no possibility for any COVID virus in that. But you have to be careful, nobody touches that, it should be kept in such a uh, area. And another thing is you can also restart you re de decontaminate the uh, N95 mask by you keeping it at a, in an oven where the temperature should be kept at 70 degrees centigrade. And they say that to, if the if the quality of the you know the the respirator, N95, which is called N95 respirator. N95 respirator is not lost. The texture is not, not lost, you can use it. Another thing is you can keep it in an, an ultraviolet chamber for half an hour. That also will eliminate the virus from that uh, N95. But that are only in terms of uh, COVID virus I'm talking. But I don't know the spore relating by bacteria and all those things, especially the tuber class and all, I don't think. But in this present situation, if you we are in the process of fighting with the coronavirus, so you can really decontaminate the N95 mask and reverse it. Now, uh, please, uh, just a minute for this. Uh, what are the things you have to see? The, the way you, you cannot practice the way you've been practicing before. A lot of drastic changes has to be take, I mean, uh, introduced into your practice. So the treatment zone, the, it's called the critical zone. And the dental chair and the six feet radius rounding area is called critical zone. So one, suppose somebody spits, suppose somebody cuff, it is at six to ten feet area. Uh, is the is, is, that is the radius of this virus stay in this area? So you have to be very careful in while you standing or sitting or working in this particular uh, you know critical zone. So the room should be well ventilated. 
and there should, there should not be an AC, AC should be shut down and in cheap uh, exhaust fan port. So that means you have to work in the negative pressure. So you are you cannot work for long in this negative pressure. You have to work for some time or only for a few hours in the, in the, in the setup. So in the, the maximum in mini, minimum time, maximum utilization, that is what you have to do in, in the coming few months. Now the, all the four should be pervious, not and safely and should be disinfected with one person. So they have to chloride and you can all the after every patient or before starting every uh, in, entering any patient, you have to disinfect the entire operatory everywhere, wherever there is chance for touching, you have to disinfect it with disinfect with one person so they have solution. And there are also high level disinfectant wipes are also there, which is a little costly, but it's also is a good option. You can just pull out uh, some uh, wipes from that and you can apply it, you can clean up the surfaces. And definitely, mandatorily, every patient, you should ask the patient to give some mouthwash. So preferably, uh, it should be, <clears throat> as per the protocol, it should be one person hydrogen peroxide or two, one to point two percent to get a solution should be given to the patient for mouthwash and should be used for two minutes and to do it, it should be done for two minutes. So every procedure, mouth rinsing compulsory for every procedure in the procedure should be done just before entering. If that's better even before the patient enter into the clinic. There should be a wash basin outside, let them do all these things outside and come to the enter into the clinic area. And it's a good option, it's a good idea if you could uh, buy a HEPA filter. It's, so it's a, not a very costly thing, it comes only some five or six thousand, five thousand, six thousand rupees for a good quality. And you can even filter virus particles, any particle aerosols uh, to the uh, point zero three. Micro particles can even be filtered with the filter. And coming to the procedures, the, that is the, the next part of it. I think none of you have got bored. I don't know. I can't see anybody in my inset. That's why it's not, a, there is no interaction happening. But still, I'm still continuing uh, pursuing that. It is, I'm audible to everyone. It's clear to everyone. And starting from the desensitization of teeth to the bias A lot of array of procedures you can do with the laser, laser machine. Phrenectomy, operculectomy, depigmentation, gingerectomy, implant recovery, crown lengthening, gingival retraction before taking the impression, incision drainage for abscess, and abscess ulcer care, hemostasis, biostimulation. And all these things, are, see, except the biostimulation, all these things come under the emergency procedure most of the time. You can, you can deep, of course, uh, operculectomy is a deep emergency procedure, phrenectomy. It need not be, but uh, sometimes sensitivity of the teeth also it depends, it's very relative. And uh, <clears throat> gingival and incision drainage, you can use your lasers. And after sorts of care, that's also sometimes the major after. It's very distressing for the patients. And bleeding, hemostasis, you can use it a lot of. And even you can do, uh, you know, uh, small, small surgeries also if you are not generating any uh, aerosols in your practice. You can do all these procedures in this uh, uh, period itself. So before start using the laser machine, the one thing you have to do is you have to cleave and initiate the tip. What is cleaving? I told you it is, uh, there is a cotton, that's a silicone cotton around the, uh, yeah, there is a, then the core is the fiber optic cable and over that you have the very thick silicone padding and over that you get, you get a plastic coating or silicone cotton, you know, the soft material. And first, you remove the jacket for some time, maybe for an inch, uh, for a length, or a length, some length, and for a, maybe for an inch. Then you remove the, you can, cleaving means you cut the cladding and took it away, and now the fiber is exposed. And, and that fiber, fiber can be a, a disposable tip or also a, a skippable fiber. And what you had to do is, there is something called, uh, uh, you know, Initiating the tip. So before touching the tissue, before start the procedure, starting the procedure, you have to initiate the tip. So the laser require just not like a, you know arrow rubber. If you arrow rubber, you can use all the sides you can cut. But in uh, <clears throat> in laser, it's an end cutting uh, fiber. So only the end only you can use it for cutting. But if you if you want to use the sides also, you can do initiate it. So you can initiate by, uh, by you know, rubbing it, activate the pedal, 
and let the machine get activated and show it on a uh, rub it on a you know uh, articulating paper or in a carbon paper or in a charcoal or, or in a this thing, cork and these are the ways by which ways by which you can initiate the fiber so in this scenario it is better always use a disposable fiber now coming to the laser tip lacing tips and one important thing which i want to remind you is every one every one should have before going for any treatment laser should have a wavelength specific high wave and this is usually supplied by the manufacturer three pairs will be supplied three uh, i go this is supplied by every manufacturer and hold the hand base with the pen grasp pen grasp like that then always keep a high speed suction next to the fiber so that is mandatory when you use a uh, laser then start with the lowest power setting i told you you don't know the depending on the characteristics of the tissue invariably wherever you want to cut the tissue you always keep the setting at a very low level say for example suppose you want to do a free neck and you think it is a high free neck it's a you know it's a very thick fibrous tissue then let it be at the uh, you know one part one part power setting then you see what happens and after that it is not cutting you just increase the power setting that's all okay you can customize it you can manually increase it and uh, that's what you have to do always start with the lowest power setting and adjust the power setting to the degree of inflammation uh, in free tissues the you know the laser should be absorbed very fast and very uh, very fast and there will be uh, the effectiveness will be much more so you like when set you can you know power setting should be adjusted accordingly and they always aim the power towards the tissue suppose you are you know you are doing a ginger cutting procedure and you should you should be very careful and you should always uh, use the tip uh, showing i mean focusing that particular area no no never ever you should not uh, keep your tip away from that it's very dangerous <clears throat> don't, don't do that sometimes you even touch some area sometimes you know you should not should not do that and always aim the power towards the tissue and you should have and you know, always use a painting motion painting motion or you know it should be like a, like a painting motion. and you should it's not like it you should always use like this and that that means that means you are not holding the tip at a particular point for a long period so you just move on and always keep small ghost pieces with you to wipe off the you know the plumes from the area and always avoid accumulating injury debris on the fiber tip to avoid hot spotting those who have been already using the laser machine must have experienced this experience this while using after use it for some time you know for a few minutes you can see that this all these materials in the chart materials uh, you know uh, the coagulated protein uh, the materials you know to get clog uh, at the at the tip so it is what happens is you know this carbon clot this is carbonized uh, Thing, you know, dirt will actually absorb the uh, laser energy, and it's called a with a heat. It, uh, it's called, called a heat sink actually, and the available energy at the at the required uh, tissue at the target tissue will be very less. So there will be collateral shifting of the uh, thermal energy, and that will and that will sometimes hit the bone or the tendon. So every now and then you have to clean up the tip with the ghost. And, and and if it is charred, you know you have to cleave it and again initiate the fiber and use it. And in case of decrease in the cutting efficiency, recleave the fiber and and re re initiate if needed. And avoid keeping the fiber tip in one area. That's what I told you. Don't use it for a long period in that one particular point for a long time. And use only short strokes and keep moving. and if you are using the laser tip in the periodontal uh, uh, pocket or in the gingival sac or is always keep parallel to it parallel to the just like the uh, prop avoid contact in the periosteum or the bone and advise patients to avoid eating hot or spicy food for two days these are some of the tips which i have to give you before starting on using the laser machine so this what i told you when you introduce the fiber uh, you know laser tip into the pocket it should be something like uh, you know so the perpendicular to the tooth surface it should not you know it should be directed towards the tooth surface or should not be directed towards the 
uh, towards outside to be something like a u motion and the <clears throat> this is a simplest uh, procedure you, which you can uh, you can use uh, in which you can use the laser in your practice because every periodontist or even a general dentist you know this is the most perplexing person you perplexing problem which you may come across in your day to day practice desensitivity, dentineral sensitivity. So, if you in such cases, it's very simple, it's very drastic result will be there. Immediate result, patient will be, they feel really uh, wonderful and uh, thank you like anything. And uh, here, the, the tip should be uninitiated because uninitiated means the power will be to travel much more. Even if you initiated, the, the, the effect will be more at the surface, at the, you know, at the surface. So it, it will travel a little more, so that you can you, you, you use it on a non-contact mode. You need to touch the two surface. It should be uh, 1.5 watts, you can use 1.5 watts, and it should be pulse mode. Pulse mode means what? 20 microseconds pulse activation and 20 microseconds, you know, uh, relaxation. So it is 20 to so the tissue, the tooth will get at a relaxation period also, cooling of the time. So if you should always keep one to two, one to two millimeter away from the root surface and lace for 30, 90 seconds. It should be a painting motion and always keep your tip perpendicular to the sensitive spot. And uh, and uh, it's like that. And uh, you repeat with the, you know, and again you leave it like that and ask the patient to come next day. And, so, and if the patient feels that uh, sensitivity is there, you can increase the power by to a little bit more and maybe 1.7 or 2 watts, and you can do it. So within two or three sittings, the sensitivity will be completely, uh, you know, patient will be free of sensitivity. Now, coming to another procedure which you can do even this COVID period is done. Here, and uh, a very simple procedure. You can you will be appreciating the quality of the room here. And this is after two days, you can see. And here also, the, the should be all, uh, uh, you know, uh, soft tissue cutting, uh, ability procedures, you should use uh, 400 micron fiber, 200 micron only for the endodontic purpose, root canal uh, sterilization. Tip should be initiated, and the power setting should be 1.2 to 2. That setting is the minimum power setting. Can we even start? I have done many of the productions with one of one watt power setting, and sometimes even without anesthesia, you can do that. It's just topical anesthesia, but don't make the patient feel pain, so you can give infiltration also. And definitely, the beauty here is there is no switches, and you can compare this. This is the same, you know, uh, multiple freedom phrenectomy has been done. One area, one freedom has been removed with the 1.2 watt setting. And the other area it is 1.4 watt setting, and the other way is 1.8 setting. You can see the actually the 1.2 watt setting is enough, but you can see in 1.8 watt setting the power uh, generation, the energy level is much more, and this is going for charring. And that you can see this white area, this is a lot of tissue has been destroyed here. So I told you, that's what I told you the efficiency and the predictability of the result of laser therapy depends on the power setting. And and gingivoplasty, that is another procedure you can do. In, even in inflamed gingiva, you can use blazers and you get the wonderful results. The power setting could be one watt to two watts. It can be a continuous or initiated tip. An initiated tip and uh, pulse could be pulse mode. If it is in the pulse mode, the power should be more. So the energy getting you're concentrating at the tip will be much lesser than compared to the continuous way. So you need uh, anesthesia, stop it in infiltration for gingivoplasty. And vitamin E is, you know, what is the way you apply vitamin E in such a raw procedures? Because uh, it prevents the dehydration of the tissue. Because when you apply, when you use lasers, the tissue vaporization taking place. A lot of dehydration taking place is prevent that, and it will alleviate pain also. And this is how you know. This is you can see this is an inflammatory enlargement here, and uh, using laser is only a matter of a few seconds. You can see this is the result. And uh, trucking. This is another uh, clinical situation where you can use uh, lasers before taking any impression. I don't think any of the participants participants in, the webinar, in this webinar will be taking a rubber base or uh, alternate impression without uh, 
for uh, you know applying the uh, traction for the proper traction of the engine and instead of uh, applying the retraction code you know when you apply the retraction code, it takes time and uh, that's the one thing and if you have a laser with you the procedure the thing is very simple and within seconds you can have the gingival retraction so the power should be get a dump maximum minimum maybe i usually uh, keep it at 0.5 watts and uh, and more depending on the quality of the tissue and the posterior in on the anteriors it's lesser and posterior may be fibrous the gingival sometimes the fibers will be i mean it will be much more energy may be needed in the posterior region so it is uh, more than one watt so we are continuous more treated tips and without anesthesia you don't require any anesthesia for that if at all require you get to give any tropical uh, don't use any anesthetic spray only use uh, you know gel for that and apply vitamin d and now just have a trapping i'll show you one small video just for relaxation why i kept this uh, video here is you know in this video i could find out a lot of problems so i just want to show you the, uh, what are the precautions you have to take when you doing uh, trapping or any procedure sort of situation you can see a metallic illustration there at any point of time you are not supposed to show your beam towards that metallic illustration what happens if you show your laser beam to metallic illustration is it get bounced back it get reflected in, in maximum energy it might go to a there may be some people you know around you know accidentally is there without any glass without any you are going so you can affect the eyes of the person so it's so never uh, always be careful when using laser and ergonomy. It's not that you cannot use it, you should not use it, you can use it, but never show it or direct to the metallic person. And uh, always use the correct mode, you should go. So always use the correct mode in this particular video that person has used. Later. But the, another thing is, uh, you can see that, uh, you see the tip, you can see the hot tip. That is a, that is an energy sink actually. And this hot tip will enough max, it will absorb the maximum energy. And the energy which is being released on the target tissue will be much less. And you know, you can see that there is unwanted tissue also it has taken and put it away. That is just because you know that hot tip has not been removed. Otherwise, the, the cut, the, the tissue could have been much more clean. So that is why I want to show this, but it's not to it's not the correct way it should be done. That's why I have this video. In this uh, presentation, finally they have removed that uh, metal metallic thing, and uh, see a little bit of more uh, tissue has been taken out uh, because that is uh, <laughs> sometimes it happens with uh, some people who are very radical. If you have a machine, you can whatever you can do with the laser, you can do that. It's not really that. It should be very gentle, and really, but very kind to the tissue. And then you should not do anything which is not required and wanted. Now, another thing which I want to, whenever doing this procedure in that uh, uh, previous uh, video, you have seen that there is no, uh, not, uh, there is no irrigation coming from any side. That's why it's so much of charring happening there. So you should always, you should have the uracil should be always giving you a very profuse uh, saline irrigation from the other side. Uh, in this scenario, in this COVID scenario, I, recommend, I don't recommend, or you, I recommend using any, uh, you know, uh, our previous syringe for that. Better. So it's better you avoid that and you can use the five-way syringe saline. And crown lengthening, another uh, important thing, procedure, the, as far as the periodontist is concerned, you can, the water power setting should be 1.2 to 2 watts, but should be continuous more because you have to cut the tissue, fibers, fibrous tissue. You have to do the fiber autonomy there, so it should be the power should be a little more. And uh, again, it depends on the kind of the type of the tissue. So it can be we can also use power say, pulse mode also. If it is pulse mode, the power has to be a little higher. And it should always use the treated tips, topical anesthetic, and vitamin E application. So I think hope you would appreciate this particular case. You can see this is a case which a crown lengthening has been done. Uh, there was a crown before and, and it has been changed, you can see.
after the crown lengthening and new crown has been put. And you will come across uh, this kind of situations every now and then in your, in your practice, especially in your orthodontic practice. So, you know, the orthodontist has to expose the crown to, yes, to, to fix the brackets. So, what you have to do is this, this, if you have a put soft tissue laser with you, it is an excellent tool to expose the It's only a matter of few seconds. And uh, you can see, you can see the, the charring happening there. And uh, you can, this, this is what I told you. Whenever you notice this, this has to be removed, this charring has to be removed, the first spot has to be removed. Otherwise, you know, the, it will not. Uh, so that's why you can see, you could see a lot of uh, black uh, uh, carbonized area. So you have to clean it up, and if you want, you can, you can break it up, you can clean it up, and reinitiate it, and use it. And the bracket has been fixed. And this is another situation you can see this is a grossly decayed canine, and the tooth has to be extracted, and the patient wants to go for a crown, bridge work here, and how did it be carefully done after the crown? Like you, you would appreciate this. And again, another crown lengthening uh, situation, you can see this is running blank here. And uh, the, the, the crown lengthening plus uh, uh, FPD has been, uh, ceramic crown has been fixed. So coming to the, this is another procedure which you can use to operculectomy. So you can, you can see this child, you know, please look at the eyes of this child. So she's really enjoying. Actually, this photograph I have taken some 11 years back. You can see that 2010, the initial days when I was using my laser. So see, this, this, this is because the patient is sitting without any reaction. The pain threshold, I could understand what the pain threshold is. And I was using power setting less than one parts. And it never heat up the tissue, but at the same time, it ablates the tissue. It vaporizes and takes the face of the tissue. You know how it happens. You need not uh, increase the temperature 100 degrees centigrade. Under the centigrade, what happens is the evapor evaporation. You don't require evaporation. The tissue inside will get denatured. And this tissue, it will come in as a bulk. It, it will not, not evaporate also. So it's everything depends on your uh, clinical, uh, you know, experience and not. So the power setting should be, this is the, you know, normal. And according to the, your perception, according to the case, according to the nature of the tissue, According to the threshold of the individual, it can be either a, you can you can you can increase or decrease the power set. And it should always be a continuous way because you have to cut the tissue, and the tip should be initiated with the uh, initiator. And it should be a pulse mode or initiated. If it's a pulse mode, you can you to increase the power setting, anesthesia, topical, and vitamin E. So the incision and drain is suppose in this COVID session, suppose a patient comes with an acute alveolar abscess. Then the alveolar abscess, the best thing you can do is give a laser incision. So suppose you give your, take your BP blade and put an incision, what happens? First, along with a lot of blood comes in, patient, it is very alarming. Sometimes definitely the patient will call you again and again and again. In the night also they'll call you and uh, the patient has to come again. And the, the key point here in this COVID season is the social distancing. Because I suppose only Vaccine, which is a variable, social vaccine. It's called the social vaccine, social distancing. So you, you always try to keep the patient, with the people coming to your clinic again and again, at least for some time. <clears throat> it is not, you are not preventing the person to come in, you are preventing the possible virus. So you just, uh, what you have to do is initiate the tip, take the current micron tip, then uh, it, could be, it should be a continuous, uh, continuous way, it can be a continuous mode or a pulse mode. And give some topical uh, gel, apply some topical anesthetic gel, and then you know high volume suction should also be because the first one is protruding out should be the high volume, high vacuum suction. Then begin the incision with 1.5 watts continuous and go deeper. And you can see the you, can, you can't see the way the pus coming out in the conventional method. And you use the uh, this thing. Uh, BP blade. If you use the laser tip, you know, it will, the, the whole thing will get to evaporate inside itself. You can see that it is something which is really miraculous. I have experienced. The swelling will get collapsed immediately and the patient will also feel really comfortable. And also, the whatever you can press and you can 
training also you can do but uh, that this is uh, this is much much better and uh, better better procedure if you have a laser machine but only thing is after that you have to you have to discard the tip in you immediately don't keep it and uh, uh, always use uh, uh, disposable tip whenever you go for an incision and train it and another procedure you can do is uncovering of the tip implant in implant exposure second stage so you can see this patient is also again a very pretty old photo you can see <clears throat> this is how you do the you know uh, expose the uh, implant in the second stage now you can see how nicely it has been done the power setting was uh, it was around 1.5 kilowatts plus and uh, here again i would like to show you a video you please take a look at this please in this i want to show you how different uh, uh, you know uh, different uh, wavelength the, the the tissue changes are happening the changes in the tissue are different, different wavelength so this is now at uh, 810 watt nanometer 810 nanometer. I told you the depth of penetration is directly proportional to the indirectly proportional to the uh, wavelength. So you can see in the organ the operating if the wavelength is more 940. The energy level is the more energy is at the top, at the, at the top level. So it is the tissue tends to get charged. That's why. But in the 810 watts, you know, that charring is not happening because the, the, it is going a little deeper. So still, charring happens. It's much more charring here, carbonization happening here. So whenever the, 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 the wavelength increases, the tissue penetration is less decreases so what happens is the energy more energy at top of the tissue so you know the more energy will be getting absorbed at the tissue at the top of the tissue and that much energy is not required actually to melt the tissue so if it's the same for the same power setting can can be damaging that's why i just want to show this uh, because the because i want to show this comparison But ultimately, once you remove out everything, it will be almost the same. But uh, it is better you use the correct wavelength and correct power set. Now, this is another case. It's a massive uh, gingival hyperplasia. This is a cyclosporin induced gingival hyperplasia. The power setting is uh, is two watts continuous power, continuous uh, continuous wave. You can see see the next uh, you can see a lot of inflammatory component also that is uh, but uh, in uh, all cyclosporin induced deep uh, level hyperplasia you can inflammatory component also will be more unlike in the case of other drug induced hyperplasia you can see the see that absolutely there is no blood there is no blood check there patient is also very comfortable you can see the periodontal packing this is barricade this is cyanoacrylate but uh, uh, you know uh, Pack, periodontal pack, light cure, light cure pack, and uh, that was it. And you can see another case, you know, this is uh, laser ablation again, gingivoplasty. This is highly, so this is a reactive lesion. Uh, this is a granulomatous lesion, you can see. There should be, so, so, imagine if you cut with a blade or even a, there will be profuse bleeding, but after uh, you can remove it with your. Here also you can see a little bit of uh, uh, blackening, the charring here. But uh, that, that, that is possible, that is okay. Because you know, you can't always uh, think that the tissue inside is uh, the same consistency. But these are all the a lot of a lot of hemoglobin also and the blood coagulates. Actually, it is not actually the carbonate, carbonate there, that is the hemoglobin block. And gingivectomy prior to restorations, that's also many time you come up to suppose you want to give a posterior compulsive restoration. There is a gingival epilis, gingival tissue protruding into that. Suppose you use a BP blading, I don't know whether you'll be able to do it in that sitting itself. 
should be a continuous mode, 1.5 watts, 2 watts in tropical anesthesia. You can see, you can, I think, hope you would appreciate. The gingival epilis, the gingival epilis has been removed, it's a BP blade here. You can see, I don't think anyone of, anyone in this, uh, attended this webinar would agree that you can immediately uh, restore it with the composite. So here also, you can see this bloody bleeding here. And uh, see this. This is uh, the tissue has been aplatted or remo removed with the diode laser, two watts pulse mode. So a little bit of cooling also there if you use the pulse mode. The tissue is not that much thick, so you can use so small, uh, uh, not very thick, uh, non fibrous tissues. You can uh, you always use the uh, pulse mode. So it's a little bit of cooling also will be there. Tissue will be very happy. And very well, you can uh, do the composite station. And, and uh, this is, you see, friends, in every periodontal surgery, I can't do any periodontal flap, flap surgery and regenerative surgery without the assistance of the uh, laser in that space. Because I'm so used to that. So it is a very good gadget for removing the granulation, debridement of the periodontal pocket. So the power setting should be 1.5 to 2 parts in continuous mode, should be initiated with the pipe. Of course, in surgery, you should give a local anesthesia and for debridement. And why I have this uh, uh, this uh, picture is, you know, uh, I don't think even after doing this uh, surgery, the tooth will not suggest not survived much. Only after a couple of months, the patient came and I extracted. I just wanted to show you. Suppose you imagine you are doing only the conventional technique. Would you ever think of, for, you know, the, root planing this to a, this extent such a beautiful way without uh, without laser so if you have the laser it is very very easy to do that you can all the you know debris or everything has been, can be taken out this i had done with you can see if you can see and after that you use a piece of so which is the tooth will never move but if you have exerting pressure on the tooth surface and try to remove the manually, you try to remove the calcium, it's just not possible. So I just want, even so such a delicate procedures, you know, you can do it easily. Now coming to the deep pigment, that is another procedure which you can very well do even in this COVID season. So it should be, your power setting should be at the lowest because you, are, you have to remove only the epithelium, only the surface epithelium. So it should be minimum power setting 0.5 to 1 volts to be continuous mode in topical anesthesia. And you can, I think you hope you would appreciate it. This is a wonderful thing about this patient. It's a pretty old case of mine. And this patient came after some time also. I will take the photograph after some three, four years, which was almost the same uh, situation. Because after any uh, deep implantation procedure, you know, you can in patches, you know, it will recur again. That was not happening. We had many cases like that. If you use laser, I couldn't find any, you know, uh, recurrence of the condition. Many of them. I don't know why. And portal wire modulation is no These are all the things which you do in the high power setting. What are the procedures you can do in the low power setting? Initially, it was called low level laser therapy. Now it is called photo biomodulation or biomodulation or bio. Stimulation all these carbon particles. So uh, you can it, 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 it can be useful in various situations like this. Like this. The one is a decontamination, decontamination of the gingival pocket. When the pocket is less than five millimeters, you can do the laser bacterial reduction, and uh, in the, you can call the patient. And after two weeks, after after a week again, you can call the patient. Like that three four weeks again, 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 you call the patient. You can see that there is. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very good uh, uh, regenerative mechanism. Regeneration is taking place here. Provided the patient also maintains the water age properly. And also it is used for gingival curettage. You are just uh, you know, shaving the gingival epithelium. Uh, when there is, then there is inflammatory, inflammatory uh, the lateral wall of the epithelium, you can cure this. For the curettage also, you can use it. Another important use I, I found is, I used in a couple of cases, a couple of maybe around three four cases uh, bisphosphonate therapy you must have seen people coming with you know necrosis of the jaw the osteo necrosis of the jaw that is a very dangerous situation especially which occurs in the mandible molar region so you 
patient who has been on especially uh, systemic uh, bisphosphonate therapy. Bisphosphonate therapy is usually given for uh, osteoporosis, uh, malignancies, uh, you know, multiple myeloma sort of uh, blood, uh, malignancies. Such patients, they may be taking this for a long time. And such patients, if you go for extraction, maybe unknowingly or even, even, even knowingly, I have seen this case. Uh, you can see that uh, the bond is, alveolar bond is getting exposed. It's getting it's necrotic. In such situation, if you just remove the necrotic bone and you just uh, do the low-level laser therapy, I could see a lot of region. And the fast healing was much, much faster. And uh, again, you can use it for uh, after surgery. That again, suppose it's another pressing problem uh, with which patient comes to you and uh, we just show this. Uh, it is also a non-contact, non-contact contact model. You can use, it, use it, and you can heal the ulcer very fast. You know, the, the pain will be alleviated. And the neural modulation. So many a times you come across with the TMJ pain in such a severe, even in severe TMJ pain. The, here the result will not be drastic, but if you you have to call the patient again and again for a couple of weeks uh, on an alternate day basis. And you apply a laser TMJP non-contact mode. Like you see, it is applied non-contact mode. But uh, there are some uh, uh, companies which uh, gives you so that they say that you have to you know, be in contact with the tissue like that. Because the, the laser is made in such a way that it is not uh, concentrating to a particular point. So you can use that. Uh, it can be used for leak and damage. Uh, sorry for the. Uh, TMJ pain also. And for the, suppose uh, in certain cases, you know, you put an implant in the, in the mental nerve region, there is a pain and, uh, and uh, there is no paresthesia and pain in such situation also. In neuralgia sort of things also, you can, you can use this uh, uh, low power uh, laser therapy. It's a great use. And I told you the low power racing problems is the decontamination and liver cure. These are the two things you can do. And some, so what is biomodulation? I told you um, that is again low power therapy, it stimulates the bone healing. And gingival cure is one example of the gingival cure. Which, and uh, I put this slide to show that this is uh, photo biomodulation because the dye has been applied here and the energy is getting into the dye very fast at a low, low power setting you can even uh, you know and do the cure touch this is how it is it should be a continuous mode 1.5 watt power setting and full mode laser decontamination procedures you can do and after that you can do the ultrasound scaling so but if you have a uh, rbm yeah, laser with you and use it for removal of the calculus and and, and bacterial decontamination for the uh, laser bacteria is called laser bacterial reduction. And uh, this is also in, in cases where the pocket depth is more, not more than three millimeters, but there is information, recurrent information in such situations. You can decontaminate the uh, gingival sulcus, otherwise, you can progress to a uh, deeper pocket, spread out the pockets in such situations. You can do. Uh, this is called a laser bacterial reduction or bacterial decontamination procedure. So this is also a low-level laser therapy. The power should be set less than one uh, one watts and 15 seconds on each tooth. And the total. And this is, is a, a endoperiolation. Here also the removal of the you know. Uh, Epithelial lining it is uh, much easier if you use your uh, laser machine. And I just put it to uh, show that uh, the, the, the versatility of this, to show the versatility of this machine. I'm, just, uh, I'm giving a pause here. Just a moment. Hello, what's up? Yeah, 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 I, I'm, I'm finishing it. It's only five minutes. 
So I just want to say that in in uh, in dental in a dental clinic, if you want to buy a RBMR laser, that also is a good option. You can do carry out all the heart tissue procedures also, and the RBMR is usually uh, the, uh, that one eye touch machine. I told you that's a good option if you could buy. You can just use for you know. Uh, cutting the, you know, if you want to really do an ostrectomy and bone block grafts or your implant placement, it's of much use. And coming to the advantages, uh, I told you bacteria are already in the back against periodontal disease. Some of the periodontal pathogens even reside in the tissue, even in the bone. And diode laser energy is attracted to melanin, hemoglobin, and water, which are abundant in the brain and disease tissue. And studies shows that laser assisted periodontal therapy results in delayed recolonization comparing to conventional therapy. So the recolonization station time will be much, much more when you, if you use uh, laser as an adjunct to the uh, conventional therapy. So it may, may, makes the periodontal therapy much more predictable than scaling and root pain. It can be safely used on cardiac patients and those with pacemakers, can be safely used on implant. That is another beauty of this machine. Um, the lasers and better patient acceptance. And, and again, it allows the removal of only disease tissues. It will not cut, it will not take away the unwanted uh, healthy tissues. It provides simultaneous coagulation of blood vessels and optimum environment for healing. And it prevents bacteremia. And again, these are all the advantages. And there's, there's a lot of advantages if you use uh, uh, soft tissue lasers in your day to day dental practice. Now, coming our fight against COVID 19. Yeah, I'm coming to the part of it. Take only five minutes more. And use of lasers can be an excellent option to reduce the viral load in the world, potentially in, the, in potential COVID 19 patients. Provides relatively sterile operating field and less aerosols and prevent cross infection because of aeros because aerosols and splatter contains less microbes. Especially in the present situation, the uh, COVID-19, the SARS virus, the coronavirus, and number of visits with the patient to the clinician can be minimized. That is very, very important. And some of the laser hazards, these are the hazards that also one should understand what are the you know demerits of using a laser, what are the things you have to take care of. These are some of the hazards. Maybe it can be there in when you're seeing a, a laser in your clinic. The basically, these optical hazards, fire hazards, and these are the two main hazards which can happen. I'll just touch upon those things. The greatest hazards are eye damage. So you definitely need an eye protection. You should always use a uh, wavelength-specific goggle. And skin damage, if you use it judiciously, do not uh, touch any area. So uh, one thing I want to tell you, this is flash, flash blindness. And some of the studies in the aviation sector in the United States recently showed that most of the aircraft accidents happen because of the flash blindness of the pilots. Because whenever they are in a very critical moment of controlling the flight, you know, they, to, if you use it, the laser, there are a lot of laser things in the cockpit. So if you if you if you look at the laser points for a long longer period of time, you know, there will be temporarily loss of uh, sight. That's called flash blindness. And many of the accidents happen because of that. So never ever look at the point, look at the laser points. So I, these are the eye hazards are mainly laser radiation, predominantly cause damage to the eye via thermal effect. The diverse in the angle of the laser light and the focusing mechanism of the eye allows the light to be concentrated in the extremely small, uh, small retina. An increase of even 10 degrees centigrade can destroy the photoreceptor cells in the retina and that can affect your eyesight. So be careful, it's, nothing is there, nothing, you're very safe if you're using the uh, Google, the spectacles, which are from, if you're wearing spectacles provided by the manufacturer. Then coming to the laser safety, what are the things you had to look upon in your clinic? Never look at the laser beam with our naked eye, I told you. Keep the machine in standby mode when not in use, and keep the bystanders and staff without uh, glass, uh, it's way out of the operating. And, uh, when it is out of the operatory, and always keep the warning sign outside. There should be a warning sign outside. The laser, you know, treatment is going on. And there should not, uh, there should not somebody, somebody should not enter into the room without any permission. So laser eye safety is very important. Yeah, these are specific goggles, and so those who are using, uh, you know, surgical loops also, 
uh, you can you can you can have this uh, glasses uh, you know fixed on the lobes also if you go to an optician we do it for it and uh, use wavelength specific eyewear only hold the handpiece with a pen grasp always keep a high speed suction tip next to the fiber start with the lowest power setting adjust the power setting to the degree of inflammation and aim the power towards the tissue keep the machine in standby mode when not in use i'm going a little faster and uh, these are the safety things there should be usually in the western countries there should there is a, according to osha regulation there should be a safety officer and such but in our country it is not uh, we don't have such things such regulation and we should definitely have a sideboard outside like this and there should be a machine machine itself is having some certain safety measures like safety interlock and four core stones of successful laser industry that is one is education just because i told you something you should not tomorrow you should not buy a machine and start practicing but you should be properly educated under a proper master or should learn it properly you should learn who should, who should have the real expertise on this particular in this particular field and you should definitely have a certification that is an illegal point of view suppose you do something the patient might and they ask you or for what ground you are doing using the, this procedure using this machine do you have any certification so if you have an authentic certification which is very good value in a court of law so that is very essential <clears throat> and you should always create before starting before doing any simply you know start doing anything you should make the patient aware of what you're going to do and you should have an educated class to the, your sisters your assistant doctors and everybody in the vicinity in the your practice so that is very much required for a successful practice and always stick on to the laser safety and these are some of the references uh, so it's a good so it's a good it's a sensible thing if you go for a good uh, you know if you look at you know the read some of the important reference uh, you know review articles and books or laser applications by j moritz and more than 80 peer reviewed articles when i like i mean i have gone through and and an overview of laser surgery in 2019 by donald j kulusi is a very good was a friend of mine he was the past president of ielb international ielb international laser dentistry he was the professor clinical professor in, uh, in the university of california in san francisco he has visited india many times he is one of the key you know, you know uh, people from which you can get knowledge he was the president of uh, uh you know, international laser dentistry and also he was conducting international courses also and uh, some of the uh, good articles you can go you can you can read application of dye laser a literature review by these two these gentlemen and uh, an overview of laser by uh, again donald colusi and coming to the conclusion that lasers are not a substitute or shortcut for conventional periodontal therapy but it is an excellent attempt to make your periodontal procedures less tiresome and more predictable and that may improve your practice and patient's expression and acceptance. At the same time, it can also prove otherwise in the hands of those who doesn't have proper knowledge and training. So bear in mind. So coming to the present situation, friends, this COVID-19 lockdown has taught us many good things. <clears throat> now our family won't again. Feeling of oneness is more than ever before. We become tougher and bolder only when that when we when we are when we, then there are challenges in life. In all challenges, there will be hidden opportunities also, and let us explore. It. I'm sure all good times will be back again. It is only a matter of few months. Stay with the nation. Stay with the nation. Stay with our state. Obey the rules and stay safe. Thank you. Let us all together break the chain. Thank you. Thank you so much.